For me, it's really important to see how the color works in the light and in different lights um, because I want to bring light into every space and even in, in dark spaces. So I often add iridescent or metallic elements to my paint so that even if it's a dark color, light is still present. I'm Christine Olmsted. I live just outside of Washington, D.C., and I'm a large-scale abstract expressionist. My mom uh, is an art historian and professional graphic designer, and so growing up um, living in her house, she always really stressed the importance of art and art history, and she would you know, have us recreate the masterpieces and learn from their techniques, and she wanted us to recognize an artist, um, you know, based on their, their palette, their composition, their subject matter. Um, and so that was a big part of my childhood. And I always have been creating. Um, I think I've been painting or drawing, you know, f at least a few days a week since I was like 18 months old. Um, I never thought that art could be a career though. Um, there weren't and still aren't a ton of women modeled um, as, as being super successful as artists and so I didn't think that it was possible to make a living from being an artist. So that really wasn't uh, on my radar as a career choice. It, developed after I went to college and decided that I couldn't see myself trying to uh, compete or live in a you know corporate ladder climbing kind of world. Um, I didn't see the point of that because I didn't want to live out my life um, doing something that I hated or working for someone else or searching just for money or success or a status and um, and so when I really thought about what I wanted to do um, after after graduating I you know had been painting my whole life and I thought uh, I want to do that and I don't know if I can make a living at it and I don't know you know the ins and outs of selling or you know getting collectors or working with galleries or you know I, I was giving my paintings away for years growing up and um, and so I didn't know how to do it but I thought this is how I'd like to spend my life and this is something that I've always done my whole life and something that I know I'm gonna do whether whether I'm selling professionally as I am now in the future or not I know that I'll be painting my whole life and so um, because it's something that I knew that I loved and knew that I, that would be a part of my whole life. Um, I decided to try to figure out the business side of it and try to figure out how I, as an artist and as a woman, could make a living from my work. So that's sort of the snippet of how I got to where I am now. In terms of technique, uh, I haven't always been an abstract artist. I used to paint uh, realism, but I think that abstraction, uh, at least to me and some people I know, um, is more powerful than realism in that it communicates in emotions and communicates in levels of almost the soul or experiences and uh, more abstract paintings have brought me to tears than um, any other form of art and I think that there's something really powerful about that and undeniable um, and so to me abstract is most impactful and so I find myself um, very inspired mostly in terms of technique by Helen Frankenthaler and Joan Mitchell and um, their works are the works that, as an artist, have touched me the most. And uh, I think in creating 
any work, you need to be aware of who your inspirations are. You certainly don't want to be a copyist, um, and you have to make sure that you're not just inspired by them, but you have many, many sources of inspiration. Um, I'm also really inspired by Japanese ink art. Um, and so combining different elements, combining different techniques, making some of your own are all really essential in the creation process. But um, to me, abstraction um, is the most powerful and soul-filled form of painting in, in my experience. I think it's really important for everybody to um, just be aware of where they are in life, about you know their values and what they believe. And, and um, one of the goals with my works is I try to infuse all of my pieces with a sense of peace and a sense of calm, um, because that is that's something that one I feel like is hugely lacking. Um, in in the world today, everyone's always so busy and stressed, and um, there's you know constant you know disruptions in the world, and there's natural disasters, and there's policy issues, and you know it's just people live in a constant state of I feel like anxiety. Um, it feels like everyone's so anxious and stressed all the time, and so uh, for me, my hope is that with all of my pieces. I can give them a sense of peace and a sense of calm and a lot of people do tell me that uh, when they look at my pieces they're very peaceful they have this ethereal calming almost glow to them and that's that's very encouraging when I hear that because that is my goal and uh, I would love to be able to break into my viewers world and give them a reminder um, whenever they live with a piece or look at a piece that uh, they can slow down and they can say no and they can choose to seek peace, they can choose to slow down and it's all their choice and so with all of my pieces that's my overarching goal is to just infuse a little bit of calm and a little bit of peace and a little bit of light into the lives of the people who either look at my work or collect my work. And I want to have my pieces accessible. So um, you know, my, my ultimate goal is, you know, I don't want to be selling for hundreds of millions of dollars when I'm, you know, old because then not everybody can appreciate it. Or I would love to always make sure that I have prints available so that um, anyone can afford a $20 print um, from a college student to, you know, maybe someone who's going through a hard time. It, you, you can... I want to be accessible at all price points so that everyone can get a piece of the peace of the calm and um, use it as a reminder, as a token um, to refocus and remember that everything that they can do in life is a choice and that they should choose what is um, most serving in that moment to them. So that's the ultimate overarching goal. You know, I would love to be seen in museums in the future. That would be uh, a huge goal of mine because museums are, you know, the ultimate like democracy where anyone can go to a museum um, and soak in the history, the meaning, the message, um, the beauty, the talent. And uh, so I would love to be in, you know, in spaces like that where anyone can enjoy it, where they don't have to purchase um, in order to look at it or, 
get a little slice of that peace and that calm. So that's that's an ultimate goal. I don't see that happening for a while yet, but um, if I could be an old lady and, and see a piece of mine in a museum, uh, it, would, it would mean a lot to me and um, mean that I have been able to reach people at a different level and give them something that they may not have otherwise been able to experience. Thank you.